In England's largest forest, there's about to be a surge of activity. The days are lengthening, the sun is getting stronger. It's a time for new life and transformations. This is a season of opportunity. This is spring. With hundreds of millions of trees spread over 140,000 acres, it's hard to believe this forest hasn't been here for centuries. Parts of it feel like an ancient land. When you come to Kielder, I always partially describe it as as close as getting to Canada in the UK because it has that feel about it. It has the huge terrain, but it is fascinating all that came from planting trees from timber production. The people who work here are part of an idea first conceived 100 years ago. The vision was to plant a timber crop that the UK could use because there was a real concern we were running out of trees. We had depleted our timber stock and the UK was in trouble. In the aftermath of World War I, Britain faced a desperate timber shortage. Woodland covered just 5% of the country and it was reliant on imports. The Forestry Commission was established and the moorland around Kielder Castle was identified as suitable for forestry. It was a real challenge to establish Kielder Forest. The ground conditions were very peaty as they are today. It was very much open hillside it was very much an area that the sheep had eaten anything they could eat. Sidka spruce was brought into the UK as a conifer tree which would fast grow and give production. The first trees were planted in 1926. Much of the planting was done by shipyard workers and miners who were housed in specially constructed camps. It wasn't until 1948 that the first mature trees were felled. Kielder now produces half a million tons of timber a year, used for building, furniture and paper. But it's become so much more. The landscape's hugely diverse compared to what it would be like if it was not planted in 1926. The species list and the naturalness is completely off scale to what this area would have been like without that intervention. As well as providing timber, Kielder has become a sanctuary for some of Britain's most cherished flora and fauna. It's during spring that much of it comes alive. It's still early spring in Kielder Forest, and the sun shines across its 60,000 hectares. But beneath the canopy, in the darker, more mysterious depths of the forest, there are unexpected treats. In a quiet, enchanting dell, the silence is broken by the sound of falling water. This is Hindhope Lynn, a waterfall that seems to appear magically out of the forest. In this shadier, damp habitat, it's mosses, ferns and liverworts that thrive. In a place like this, it's easy to understand why forests have become synonymous with folklore and fairy tales. To reveal some of the hidden mysteries of the forest, Secret cameras have been placed across Kielder, and they've made a rare sighting of an animal once extinct in England. 
This is a pine martin, elusive and secretive. They're a cat-sized member of the weasel family. The first sighting of a pine martin in the forest's history was only made in 2018. This footage is more evidence they are taking up permanent residence here. It's even hoped pine martins can help the local red squirrel population. Studies show that with grey squirrels being easier prey for pine martins, their presence can stop the spread of the red's arch enemy. Just as quietly as they appear on our cameras, they slip away. At the osprey nests, the parents continue to protect their eggs. While the female does most of the incubating, for the male, there's one job he's expected to do above all, hunt. The osprey is one of the only birds of prey to feed almost exclusively on fish, something Kielder Reservoir has plenty of. The osprey is an ambush hunter. It circles the lake looking through the surface for the ripples of a fish's fin. They must combine their incredible eyesight with impeccable timing. Once it spies its target, it begins to dive for the water. The osprey can go deep into the reservoir. The fish might fight, but his talons are equipped with adhesive scales and long curved claws for an unbreakable hold. The osprey then carries the fish with its head facing forwards in the direction it's flying, keeping it streamlined. He's fulfilled his duty. His partner can feed up as she continues to wait hopefully for her new chicks. Elsewhere, new life is already emerging. Amidst the pond skaters and newts, this shallow pool is full of tadpoles. From above the water, they look like simple jet black blobs. It's hard to imagine, in a matter of weeks, they'll become the next generation of frogs. These alien-like creatures are some of the greatest shapeshifters in nature. Already they have changed from the days when they first hatched. As newborn tadpoles, they had no eyes or mouth, but did have antler-like feathery external gills. They were also equipped with a cement gland on their heads, allowing them to spend their early existence simply attached, motionless, to a plant or their egg jelly, remaining hidden from predators. <laughs> 